Awesome. So uh, what was the next scenario and or question? I know that we had a question here in the room dealing with banks at some point, but let's, uh, let's see what we've got in the field. She got what you said, and thus far we haven't had any other questions come through. So. Okay, great. So Cheryl, you had some questions about banks. Can I turn the time over to you for a second? Yeah, this is something we haven't gone over, so I just wanted to see how we set that up once we had money, what we did with it. Okay, perfect, perfect. So what ends up happening is, is by default, when we create a corporation, we automatically give you one bank, okay? You can actually have unlimited number of banks, okay? So by default, that probably comes in with the word default bank. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to actually go to the banks here, okay? So ideally, this particular one, it's actually going to go to the running bank balance, which is great. It kind of shows me my values. I can click register, or I can back it up. I can say, do I want what I know, or do I want what the bank knows? There's a switch there, okay? It makes a huge difference when you're literally looking at things, okay? If you're trying to uh, validate and kind of reconcile banks, you can't run off of what you have. You have to run off what they have, which so, goes so to the verified level. Basically, what I'm doing is like my check register would be the deposit expense. Oh, yeah. Receipt. So just, but, just for fun. Verified is what if I went in on the Internet and said what did my bank have. Correct, That's correct. So I only have one little laptop here today, but at home I'll have two monitors. And I've got my Atlas on one page and my bank on the other page, and I'm literally walking through, oh, I see that one, oh, 5,000 in, oh, you know, whatever is going on. And I'll physically walk through that thing. I have it to the T. And so what I do is I virtually marry these two together. What does the bank say? What does Atlas say? And what Atlas actually has is even more than what the bank says because I know everything that hasn't cleared yet, too, right. inside of Atlas. And so it's just basically a switch. You have to know that there is a switch inside of Atlas that does that. So before we deal with banks, let's actually go to the bank homepage, okay? So to add a new bank, it's very easy. There's a link here. This is a permission. Even to get to the bank level, you have to have permissions. To get to the deposit level, there's probably three different permissions on the deposit level. On the expense level, there's probably five or six different, because de expenses are a little bit more in, in detail than deposits, okay? So even to play, you've got to have a bunch of these permissions turned on. This isn't anybody can get to this, okay? What we're going to do is I'm going to just show you what it would look like if you were to add a bank. It's pretty easy. If I do add a bank, it would basically start showing up down here. One, two, three, four, five, however I need it, okay? Um, just right here, I'm going to hit Add Bank. And you basically say, okay, what is required? You start popping through it. The bank name. You start entering it. You enter the account number. Uh, if you're worried about the account number, these type of information, we encrypt this when you actually store it inside of Atlas, okay? Uh, if you're worried about it, <laughs> satisfy the, the requirements on the field, and then you're good to go. But it will, it will still record what goes in and out without it. Without oh, yeah. It. Basically, what you do to create a bank is you create some sort of a name. This part right here is very important. What do you want to call it? I'm just going to kind of just do some fake things right here. The, the piece that will get you in trouble, if you put fake things in, it protects your information. But then if you ever are needing it, you have zero information to look at. And so, okay. um, and I'm not going to say yay or nay because this is up to you. This is totally up to you. But we can do this. We can put some address in here. Uh, let's actually make it go into Texas just for fun. Maybe we've got a bank in Texas. And say I knew the zip code, and I don't, but let's fake that. So we're basically I'm looking for asterisks if I was going down here through really fast. If you're going through slow, you can easily kind of be like, oh, okay, okay, yeah, interesting. Starting balance. When did I start? These little pieces right here, I'm just going to kind of give you a quick little heads up, okay? When you're adding a bank and it's brand spanking new, no problem. If it's an existing bank and you're trying to get balance sheet and income statements and all this kind of stuff to match up, you have to do a little bit of magic right here because basically it's kind of like, what did the bank say I had? 
when did it physically start, and what was behind that line that was still possibly coming forward. Like, it gets a little bit more fuzzy. It's totally doable, but it's just a little bit more fuzzy. If it's a brand new bank, you just say zero, boom, boom, go. And we can, it's, it's almost a, probably a whole other tutorial to kind of show you how to do it. If, say you're in midstream, but you know that you have X thousands of dollars that still hasn't cleared, but it's already been kind of like percolating through the system. You basically have to help pull these pieces in so that it knows where to start and how to do that. Okay? It's not a big deal, but it, it does, it's, it's just a little bit tricky. You can actually enter a check number. This is very important right here. Check type. This is one of the things that Sandy was actually asking about as far as the default check writing bank. Um, ideally, you just have one per corporation, even if you have multiple banks. Okay? This check type right here says, hey, do I want to handwrite my checks? Do I want to use a dot matrix form like in triplicate? Or do I want pre-printed stock? Okay? I'm going to actually choose check on the top, and then I would basically say, the other thing that I want to show you really quick is uh, we have no affiliation with this particular company, but this is who we buy our checks from. <laughs> um, it's called Laser Printer Checks, and basically you go there and you just order checks. It's basically pre-printed. They, they get your account number and this and that, what check to start on. Do you want them to go in ascending or descending order? Basically, it's how they're stacked into the thing so you can feed them into your printer. Um, but any checks will work. If you have old QuickBook checks, if you have checks from your bank, or as long as it's an 8.5 by 11, we can run those checks on there. So uh, this is just some information, if you will, about the check type. If it's handwritten, you'll, you will not get a button to actually be able to print the check. Okay? It's basically like, okay, cool, you said that it was that much. I'm going to believe you, if that makes sense. So what we're going to do is, uh, instead of me adding another bank, if you're okay, I'm just going to hit back. Okay, so basically the edit mode is the exact same fields that we're actually looking at. It's just now I'm in edit mode versus this. So I currently have check on the top, and that's what my for High Country Bank. Okay, you can add as many as you want. It'll start showing you values and registers. When you actually go to set up your checks, once your bank is here and you've actually assigned it to a check type, the next step is right here. What this does is it opens up a little flash application. This little flash application basically says, okay, guess what? I know that you're going to eventually have some stuff. So anything that's in gray right here, you can see as, as I mouse over it, its value will show up right here. The number, the address, the this, the that. If I want to move something, say this is a control number that Atlas adds to it automatically so that it knows which expense receipt. If I click on it, you can see how it turned blue. I'm physically going to use my little arrow keys now on my keyboard and I can move this guy anywhere I want it to move. Okay? Does that make sense how I can kind of play with the settings? Is it actually going to show on the check? This will physically show on the check. Okay? okay? And what it is is it'll actually put the physical number in a box. And so instead of saying 99999, that's just a placeholder. Right. So if I was dealing with expense receipt 3,400, it's going to go 3400 and put a little box around it. Okay? The bank doesn't care a lick, but it really helps you to know what check was this thing tied to. It's, it's virtually a control number. That's how that works for you, okay? So anyway, you can move any pieces. You're like, oh, you know what? I want this over here, and this over here, and this over here. And because it's just a blank check, and you're going to print all of this onto a blank check. Correct. And so basically, um, you have to be careful when you say blank check and pre-printed check, okay? And I'm just going to explain it real quick. I actually brought uh, some checks. Just a minute. I'll grab this. Just a second. Okay, so you may or may not be able to see this, but this is a pre-printed check, okay? It's an eight and a half sheet of paper. And basically what it does is it has account numbers, logos, bank information, and blank fields. This is very important. This little section right here of where your uh, information goes, this ends up having to be uh, magnetic ink. Okay? So if you get a hundred percent blank, like we're talking like that type of thing, just plain blank, 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 you actually have to have magnetic ink in your printer and Atlas doesn't even print these numbers on there. So you actually want a pre-printed check that is it's a cross between blank and 
Okay, so this is, this is called routing. check stop. Okay, it routing has, number and account number. Correct, and, and correct. the check number. And the check number, okay? And so this is by default, these pieces come onto this little thing, okay? okay? Now what you do is the little piece that we're actually dealing with right here uh, is the setup. If you wanted to, you could print a test page. You could do this as many times as you wanted to. And then um, basically what you do is you take the test page, which just gives you the information, uh -huh. and you take this and you stick them on top of each other, and then you look at the light. Like, okay. oh, looks like I need to move this one down a little bit, or this one this way. You don't want to actually use real checks to do your testing to make sure everything's lined up on it, okay? So I would highly recommend using a blank piece of paper and just virtually going over the light or window and kind of starting to go that direction. You can print and print and print. Make sure that you save your settings when you're actually done, okay? And if you need it, some, uh, some actually need another uh, payee line. So this right here, by default, it's off. If I click it, it actually adds another uh, vendor payee line above and beyond the address, and, and certain checks require that, but it's basically just like an extra little line that you can add if you need it, okay? I'm going to go back right here, but this is where you set up your check. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually run a thing, and so I'm going to actually virtually write a check from this bank, and we're going to actually run it onto blank check stock, okay? Uh, so what I'm going to do right here is we're going to actually go pay for something that Shannon did the other day. So one of our vendors was under midwifery. She's going to take some, some classes to be a midwife. Now if I want, I can actually come in here and I can say, what do I owe them? Okay, so currently I owe $400. Actually, I owe them $325 because I already paid $75 of that, okay? Now, here's my default check writing bank. It automatically shows up, and according to this, and I realize this is a play site, but I have plenty of money. I could probably pay for this one, okay? <laughs> so um, that is a key to the default check writing bank. It will show up right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to say, hey, you know what, let's pay the rest of this guy off. I'm going to hit pay. It comes to this little portion right here. It already knows I'm dealing with expense receipt number 28. Here's the current date. Here's the amount I told it. And I'm going to change this to check. This is the bank. If you had multiple banks, you would basically click and choose, okay? And then the check number. And this particular check number is 0006, okay? You're not required to put any notes, but if you do use notes, there's a little bit on the help file that talks about the memo field. On your check, you have a little thing under memo. If you wanted to actually record like a certain piece on this physical, physical check, not down here, but right here, if you add it right here into the payment notes, it automatically sucks it into that memo field. Okay? Just as a kind of an FYI for you. Just so that you can see how this works, um, I'm just going to put something in there so you can see it, okay? This is not required. It's totally an optional field. I'm going to say add payment. At this point, it reroutes me back to the expense receipt line item page for the expense receipt that I was on, okay? If I scroll down, here's where we were basically paying for it, just for fun. Looks like we were just playing, okay? And now, here's my first one that I actually paid check number 777 on a different expense. Like this was actually part of a split, and this one I'm actually going to do as a check. You can see now it says print check. Okay, we ready to actually print this thing? <coughs> Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and click on print check. It brings up another little flash application, and it kind of gives me all of my information that's what's going on. What I'm going to do next right here is I physically have this piece of paper, and I'm going to run it through my printer. Okay, so I basically either come up to my printer or depending on how your scenario is you would load it into your printer once it's in the printer and you have to experiment every printer is different like I will not even say anything about this all I'll say is they are all different do you load it facing up facing in facing down facing you know all sorts of different ways you're gonna to want to play okay when I click print right here basically if I click print on the browser, it just prints the flash widget, okay? We don't want that. We physically want it to say print check right down there. I then choose the printer that I'm going to do if you have multiple printers, and I say print. At this point, I can see this printer trying to fire up 
and it'll actually suck my check in and say, cool. So basically at this point, I already get a congratulations message, even though my printer hasn't fully finished yet. This is an old, old, old inkjet, so it's going to be like, hey, hey, hey. At this point, usually what I do is I usually click on expense receipt or expense receipt line items to kind of jump me right back to that particular page. This is a, an important piece. It adds a few little pieces of details on there as far as like, was it printed, who printed it, and what's actually going on, okay? So mine just finished here, and because we're live, I now have a fully printed check, okay? So by default, a bunch of this stuff was blank, but it ended up filling in all of the different little pieces. Now if I want to, watch this, we're going to go full circle with this. You see how it doesn't have anything attached to it? If I wanted to scan the same check, just to kind of give you an idea, we're going to just quick do a scan of that. Now this, this is a, a dog slow printer, but I'm going to come here and I'm just going to kind of make sure that I'm only at the 100 DPI level, the only one to scan at that high, and I'm going to say next, and I'm going to say next. This is my little scanner wizard, and so it's actually going out and it's going to grab that little check, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it so that you can actually visibly see what I was doing and how it actually worked. While it's scanning really quickly, I'm going to switch back to Atlas, and I'm going to click on edit photo. I don't want to click my browse button until I until I hear that my scanner is done, because if I do, it technically will try to read the file before it's all the way done. Okay, so that's just kind of a little piece of technical information. If you've never been to the basic photos before, I highly recommend that you check this particular graphic. It'll show you your settings, okay? Um, I just heard my scanner being done, and so now I'm going to click on Browse. And basically, it popped in this number 20, and don't worry about the numbers. Your own little things are going to be incrementing your own pieces and also where you have it stored. I'm going to click Open, and I'm going to click Add the Photo. So expense receipt number 28 just got a full photo that was done. I'm going to go to the gallery, and we're going to actually look at this thing, okay? So basically, here's the little box that has the expense receipt number in it. 28, 28, 28. It has the date. Here's the date. Here's the date. Here's the date, here's the amount, the amount, the amount, the amount in verbiage, okay? So basically a bunch of pieces. What's the check number? It's going to come in here and it's going to verify that everything's going. So basically what ends up happening is, is we get a virtual snapshot of this thing. So when I finally go to send this check off, I'll tear off one of the stubs or two of the stubs. I then am able to just virtually stick it into my pile. I don't even have to, I don't even have to, um, categorize it or like file it, I basically stick it in my pile and I have all the information. It was check number 006, it was expense receipt number 28, it was for this amount, it was to this one here, it was here. Here's my little memo. So if I was doing this and I really wanted to be detailed, see how the memo, it, it was a little high on that, I would actually go back to my settings and, and bring that down just a little bit. Okay, and the little box, the 28 is where you were saying that's the little number that Correct. Is matched to that. Correct. So, so watch this. I know that this is now 28. Say it's a week later or whatever, and I'm looking through my files, and I'm like, oh, well, what's going on here? I can go like this, expense receipt, and I see that magic little number, and I can go 28, and hit go, and it automatically takes me to this piece that basically has all of this history and what's going on, and then I can even say, wow, what happened here? What's going on? Okay, looks like we created it, then we added a line item, and then we did this, and we actually split it out with another one, and then we actually printed a check, and et cetera, et cetera. Like, um, that little control number is very important. And what we actually encourage people to do is if, if you're... Uh, Handwriting one. Oh, yeah. You, you literally, like, as soon as you, you, that as soon as you get a number, if you don't have a check assigned to it, or, or say I got a new piece of information in the mail, like a little bill or something like this, Okay, what is this? I enter it into the system. As soon as I have it into the system, I go with this. Say, say this was PO number 77. I would go 77, put a little box around it, and just put PO. So all of a sudden, PO 77, I did this, and if I scan it and it's already attached, I virtually can file my stuff like this. Next, 
next, next. I don't have to go, okay, I gotta go to this vendor and this month and this and this and this. It's it's all there. So I can go so much faster to the system and be like, hey, I want to pull up all of my vendors or all of my expense receipts for such and such. Okay. Oh, here's the photo. Like you can get to it in a heartbeat. You didn't even leave your desk. Okay, so virtually Atlas can become part of your your almost like a paperless office. Paperless sometimes mean you have to have paper originally <laughs> to get to that, but uh, you don't have to have just cabinets and cabinets and cabinets and cabinets full of the stuff. The way I actually sort my stuff in Atlas, I have one little folder on my desk, and as soon as I do it, whether it's an invoice, an expense, or whatever. I just shove it in there, I write on it, PO77, I put a little box around it, put it in there, and then all of a sudden, that's my filing system, okay? And I take that and I basically send it off to corporate headquarters, and they take it as is, and they stick it in a vault because we have to keep records, okay? But if I ever want something, guess where I go? To Atlas. It's right here. We just did all of this, watch this, I'm going to pop home for just a quick second, and if I click on history, and reports and if I come down and uh, here's my expense pieces right here so at ER image scans I did one of them today if I click on it I can instantly get to this little check that we just created right there what is ER? okay ER is basically that's a great question E oh, it's R okay so basically it's a shortcut what, what the heck's an ER <laughs> ER ER oh no I'm just kidding <laughs> Okay, any other questions? That's a little bit about banks. Oh, we haven't talked anything about reconciling banks. But basically, what you do is you do your business. What am I paying for? What am I depositing? What am I doing this? So basically what happens is it starts building up data. And then when you go to check it against your actual physical thing, you're like, okay, which pieces really? <laughs> what was really seen? What wasn't seen? It's, it's basically a, another little process. And it's, it's, it's relatively easy. There's actually even bulk pieces that you can do to kind of verify things and check them off. And you record a date, you update it, it automatically pushes that date into those different pieces. Okay, I guess my question was is if I'm going paperless or fileless, mm -hmm. um, what kind of security is if, if I have a power outage? Obviously, it's stored on your server. Correct. What kind of security? in case there's a power outage where your server is? Okay, that's a great question. That's a very great question. Um, what you're going to want to end up doing is, is, are you talking about the physical documentation or the physical data? Because technically, they reside in a slightly different place. Um, I, your, your question is very <laughs> valid. Very, very valid. Okay? So, what you have to do, I'm going to switch gears for just a quick second, and that's a wonderful question, okay? So inside of Atlas, if we have all of these little containers that we're sticking pieces into, okay? Mm -hmm. So say some of these blue ones, we're going photo, 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 photo. And then over here we're like vendor, 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 vendor. And over here we're going expense receipt, expense receipt. Okay, what happens is because the model has all of these different little places that we're able to store these things, if you want, you're like, I want everything. It's like, Ugh. But what we do is we basically say, hey, let me show you how you can get to your pieces and which pieces do you want, okay? And then that's how you could actually kind of get to that stuff. Or say, for instance, you're like, hey, you know what, I'm kind of done with Atlas and I want it to move on, I want to get my data. Well, it's your data. We don't want it, okay? We basically help you do it and store it, but let me show you how you can get to your data. So basically, you could run reports, you could save as PDFs, you could print, you could do all sorts of stuff if you wanted to get the data off. You also could do this. Um, I'm going to actually just make sure I'm going from the map just so everybody knows where we're at. If I click on history and reports again, this will pull up my current information. Okay? I also have a cool little link called All Advanced Searches and Exports. Okay? So basically, this is a way I can get at my data. So this particular page, I'm just going to kind of orient you. We have categories, main application players over here. Okay, a whole bunch of different kinds. Do I want to quick search any of these guys? Do I want to create anything new? Do I want to go to their home page? Do I want to do any advanced searches? Do I want to export to Excel? And there's only a certain number of these pieces that we actually allow to be exported. But say if you were worried about expenses, um, 
basically you have different ways. Do you want just the mains, just the line items, just the payments, or do you want to kind of like really tweak some of this stuff out? So I'll just show you real quick. Say I wanted to say, hey, I just am worried about the payments, the physical checks that actually went out. I can click on this, and I'm going to click Save, and I'll, I'll just let it go to a specific spot here. Why don't we just put it on my desktop? Receipt Payment List. Save it. And then I'll say, sure, go ahead and open that as an Excel file. So basically, this is pulling data right out of the database, okay? Here's all my expense numbers. Here's the vendor that they were. Here's the payment date. Here's the amount. Here's the type. Here's the bank. Here's the et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, if that makes sense, okay? So you're able to get at your data. It's your data. But guess what? It's actually your responsibility to go in and grab it. If you are worried about it, then you need to kind of go get it whenever you want or feel comfortable with it. Um, we do nightly backups, okay? So if anything happens, if anything were to go majorly, majorly wrong, we would lose a max of one day type thing. So we do nightly backups, and it's basically we do a roll in two weeks. So say we do a backup, this backup would technically exist for two weeks, and then we would write over the top of that. So we keep a roll in two weeks of backups. That's what we do to protect ourselves if you're worried about your personal data, you're more than welcome to go get it. You can print anything you want. You can, if you have Adobe Acrobat, which is another outside product, but you can technically turn anything inside of Atlas into a physical PDF. So you can, you can virtually replicate the exact structure of what's going on. It takes a little bit of work. Don't get me wrong, but it, it's that is how you get at your data, other than outside of the source. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, perfect, perfect.